What is up YouTube? My name is Eric Johnson and welcome to my channel. In November of 2019, my partner and I bought a three bedroom, three bathroom, 1100 square foot fixer upper condo in San Diego, California. We spent nearly $40,000 in the entire quarantine doing my first ever DIY home renovation. Throughout the renovation process, I found a passion for creating and after the year of universal re-evaluation that was 2020, we sold the house and I bought a 2020 Ford Transit 148 extended with all-wheel drive so that I could convert it into a full-time off-grid home of my dreams. I'll be documenting and sharing everything about this DIY van conversion. If you'd like to follow along, by all means, hit that subscribe button. What's up, YouTube? Uh, in today's video, we're gonna be installing the passenger seat swivel. Um, I'm also gonna be installing the driver's seat swivel. From what I've gathered online, it's a smart idea to go ahead and disconnect the battery power. There's the airbag sensor that's built in or wired in. And if your power is connected, it's not that you're necessarily gonna trigger the airbag, but you might trigger an error code that you're either gonna need an OBD2 tool or have to go into a dealer to get that code removed. If you look at like Far Out Ride, they don't mention doing it, but I am just gonna play it safe. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Well, let's, uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, so these are the Scopima seat swivels. I got this as a recommendation directly from uh, Far Out Ride. They do include the hardware that you'll need and just kind of testing the operation before installing it. They are pretty beefy, so careful not to pinch your fingers. I was, as you can see, kind of terrified of pinching my fingers the entire time, but uh, the operation actually is really smooth. There's pretty minimal wiggle. Yeah, so first step is just kind of removing or unscrewing this decorative cover. And then we do have the driver's seat uh, airbag sensor. It's zip tied in, so you just gotta snip that. And then this battery cover kind of just pulls right out. Uh, the next thing is this plastic cover. Um, I am not exactly sure what it is that I end up unclipping here in the front, but I wasn't able to pull it out until I kind of fiddled with it up front. Um, no idea what I did, unfortunately. But yeah, once you um, undo the front clip, it does come out a lot easier. Uh, then we're on to the next step. Yeah, so this metric 10 socket, you're going to end up using a ton, not only for removing the uh, battery terminal connections, but actually also the uh, seat mounting hardware as well. As far as this negative terminal, I just kind of tucked it between some plastic and the battery trying to keep it out of the way. Um, the next steps were pretty straightforward. It really is just kind of uh, moving the seat forward to expose these rear mounting screws, unscrewing them. I also use a little cubby just to try and keep track of everything. Um, as far as all the loose hardware, you don't want to forget any of these things later down the road. So the seatbelt sensors are actually screwed in with what looks like a 930 second. So that's one of the only things that wasn't metric. And maybe I just, I don't know, it did fit, seemed to work pretty well. But uh, yeah, only non-metric that I can recall using for this whole process. So to undo the seatbelt, you do have to remove this little plastic cover and that will expose the anchor point. And then I, uh, the next part is a Torx T45 bit, which I was able to just get at my local hardware store. So guys, real quick, before you actually mount the swivel, there are still two zip ties you need to cut that are holding in the uh, airbag sensor cable. And you wanna snip those with, and you have easy access rather than waiting until you've installed the seat like I did, makes it a lot harder. Here, you wanna be careful not to strip these screws or the threaded sockets. So even though I'm using a drill, I am trying to be pretty careful to make sure that it feels like the screws are actually threading in quite properly. You can see here, I end up backing out a couple of times and it was really just that the clearances are so tight with the four corners that you really can't uh, tighten any of these screws down. So leave them about half, uh, half screwed in before you have all of the screws at least started in their threading. And then you can go back and tighten them all as you'll see I end up doing. Now, on to the fun part. So actually installing the chair itself isn't that hard. Um, you do wanna try and position this so that the corners where these sockets you're gonna have uh, easy access to. You'll see here that when I first install these, I'm screwing them in or installing with the uh, screw top down and then the uh, washer and nut I'm coming in from underneath. I would not recommend doing this. This will cause a clearance issue. You'll see that I end up undoing all of these screws and I flip them the other way around. The correct direction is you wanna make sure that the head of the screw is on the underside going up and then the washer on top, the nut on top of that. Yep, 
here I found a clearance issue with the, I don't know, it's like a handhold rail. And so this had to go um, pretty easy with a multi-tool. Uh, I did go through a couple of metal bits, so just make sure you got a few extras on hand. Uh, now that we're finally actually getting clearance all the way around, this is where you see that the uh, original screw orientation that I installed is causing an issue. It's also running into it and gouged the crap out of my swivel. So like I said, got to undo those and get them installed the right direction. So now we're just reconnecting that airbag sensor cable. Um, the issue that I run into next though, is that like I mentioned earlier, I forgot to clip those two uh, zip ties before I had installed the seat. So you'll see that I end up spending, it's actually it took me like a half an hour fiddling trying to get those things cut. But hopefully you did that before you installed your swivel. Okay, so day two and now we're on the driver's seat. Um, same kind of process as the passenger seat, though it is a little, uh, I guess I'd say more frightening just because you do have the battery components. Um, but it's not too bad actually. Uh, all the exact same steps. Uh, I would just recommend, like I mentioned before though, try and uh, keep track of all the hardware so you don't uh, misplace or lose anything. So the driver's seat, um, the airbag sensor cable is also zip tied in two spots. So you're gonna wanna make sure you uh, snip those zip ties before trying to remove the seat. It might cause some, some uh, strain on that cable. So I intentionally left this clip in just to kind of draw attention to, you guys aren't seeing probably 90% of what actually does take the most time is just me kind of staring at what looks like a little problem or a puzzle in front of me and trying to figure out what's the next piece that I'm undoing, trying to make sure that I'm not forgetting something or skipping a step or I don't know. But uh, yeah, I figured I'd leave that in. Okay, so now that we've got all of the battery components and storage out of the way, it's on to the handbrake itself. The plastic skirting is just kind of held in with, I don't know, like press fit clips, I guess. So just a little bit of upward force and it should disengage those clips and it just kind of slides off and around the handbrake. Even if you do have the built-in uh, inverter, the power inverter, which I do have, you can actually see that black box underneath the handbrake that is the actual inverter itself. So in order to get access to the uh, hardware that's holding the handbrake on, we actually have to remove all of this kind of wiring uh, system inside this driver's seat box. There's a few different spots where the hardware uh, is located, but actually all of it's outside of this bus bar enclosure. So you don't actually even have to open it like I did. Here, this wiring harness is just kind of uh, press fit onto these screws. They're, it's not actually bolted, so you really just need to kind of give it a, a strong pull. And then you also need to disconnect. Uh, there's two uh, clip-in uh, wires. They're all part of this smaller wire. You can see them snipping right here. And these, one goes to the actual power inverter and one goes to the handbrake. We're gonna have to modify this wire later, so make sure to keep track of it. So I found on this side of the handbrake, the uh, that aforementioned wire, it's uh, kind of secured to this mounting bracket with just like a rubber gasket. And so that's where the plier comes handy, just kind of pulling that gasket up. So once we actually get the lowering bracket installed, it is gonna partially cover this through hole that the wire goes through. So not only do you have to remove the wire, but also this rubber grommet also has to go.
So next we gotta remove this mounting bracket and we're gonna actually save half of it. Um, you're not gonna be using it in its entirety, so it's totally fine to cut a little channel here. This is the easiest way to actually get it out of your way without having to try and disassemble anything further. Um, you are gonna make a few modifications to it because we do need to save the top half. The reason being is this right here is your airbag sensor system and it's supposed to be pressure sensitive. So we do wanna make sure to cover that back up. Now you'll see that there are actually several more screws that we need to uh, cut off in order to fit the lowering bracket. These screws are welded on, and so the easiest way to get rid of them is just using a multi-tool. Uh, same with this nut, it's also welded on. Um, however, once you do get these uh, the screws cut away, you're still gonna have to drill them out. This is probably the hardest and messiest part of the entire job, but if you make sure, get yourself a good metal cutting bit, it will make this job a lot easier. You won't go through as many bits as I did. Also, you'll probably end up needing some kind of a lubricant, something to kind of help keep things cool. I let my bits overheat, and that I think also added to why I went through as many bits as I did. Oh, shit, shit. Yep. So here's that mounting bracket from before, and like I said, you do have to kind of modify it quite a bit in order to get it to fit with the adjusted handbrake position, uh, but we do still want this in order to cover that airbag sensor module. So here we're replacing that modified uh, mounting bracket and again it's really just kind of protecting that airbag module it's not actually connected to anything but it is still pretty important and a pain in the butt to install this is that cable we mentioned earlier that was connecting our uh, inverter and the e-brake as you can see i've cut away the inverter stuff unfortunately it there's just no room to fit it, so we won't be reusing that inverter, but we do still need the handbrake cable. So here we're just cutting off that grommet as I did not think it would be possible to get that thing installed again. Um, and I'm just using the original wire loom as kind of the protective sheathing through this. Uh, it, it's pretty small now. This uh, opening was about, I don't know, an inch and a half um, circumference. Now it's, it's like halved, if even that. And then again, really tight spaces, uh, very fun to do. So now we're finally putting everything back kind of just in the reverse order that we uh, took it apart in. Um, this first section, just because these cables are, there's so much tension on these metal cables that um, it's, it's actually fairly difficult to, to get it, or at least I had a hard time uh, kind of getting it seated back in its original um, holes. But it, once you get it like fit in, everything kind of falls together really quickly.
brick. So as I mentioned before, uh, make sure that you install the bolt from the bottom up and then washer and the nut on top. Don't do it the other way around. Um, you will have a clearance issue. And that's it, you guys. Honestly, the driver's seat was pretty simple uh, with the exception of lowering the handbrake, by far the hardest part. Um, I think starting with the passenger seat does kind of help give you sort of like a, a template to work off of and made it a lot easier getting the, the driver's seat installed. Okay guys, thank you so much for sticking around until the end. If you're still here, I would super appreciate it if you give this video a like. Let me know what your favorite part of this video was so far. I'm honestly questioning what about these tutorials I wanna keep or if I wanna kinda of change up this format. I don't know if I'm getting too granular or if I'm, you know, the videos are kind of going too long. Let me know in the comments, it's greatly appreciated. But let's get into why I chose the Scopima seat swivels for my van conversion project. Unabashedly, I got this recommendation from Far Out Ride. They initially installed a different brand of seat swivel. I went through that entire uh, installation process that they detailed, and it was significantly more complicated than these Scopimas. They actually end up removing their original seat swivels and they replace them with Scopimas on both the front and the passenger. Totally understandable as to why, because these were a breeze to install and I have had zero complaints about them. As far as the difficulty level, these Scopima seats, like this whole project, I would give it like a three out of 10. It was honestly quite easy. It, it's like Legos, you know, you're just kind of taking apart screws and putting them back. There's a little bit of hacksawing in there, but not too bad in comparison to like, for example, the ceiling fans. If you haven't seen that video yet, there's a link to that video where you can see where I installed two Max Air fans. That was, I would say maybe like a seven or an eight out of 10 on the difficulty level, fairly involved. So in comparison, seat swivels, super easy. As far as how long it took for the passenger seat, uh, this was, I would guess somewhere in the neighborhood of two to three hours for the install. And that's including having to reverse the hardware after I ran into a, a little bit of a difficulty. If you can just skip that hardware snafu from the jump, it'll probably be even faster for you. The driver's seat, I would guess was about five to six hours as far as that install. It did take a bit longer. Yeah, the only real hurdles that I ran into were again, the mounting hardware, but it was the orientation that I had installed them initially was causing a clearance issue. So if you just uh, mount the hardware from like bottom up as opposed to top down, you shouldn't have any issues. The next uh, issue that I ran into was that kind of like handle on the back of the passenger seat. From what I can tell, that's supposed to be like some sort of an anchor point for like a child safety seat, but that makes no sense given that it's a pass, like a front row passenger seat. So I'm not exactly sure why that is even included, but it's easily removed, thankfully. So let's get into the cost breakdown of this project. My two seat swivels, including shipping, was $850. The only real extra uh, tools or part of this project is gonna be a few drill bits and then saw blades. I got them all part of like a, as a pack, so it's kind of hard to estimate the budget, but I'm just guessing it's around $15 worth of bits and saw blades that I went through or destroyed. So adding everything together, we're looking at 865 or about 2.4% of my total anticipated conversion budget. This then brings the running total for our conversion to date 
to $3,520. So guys, if you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already seen it, you might enjoy this other video of mine where I installed my two Max Air fans. Um, if you have any questions about either this process or what you want to see next, let me know in the comments, but I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much.